In this video, we'll be looking at pattern matching in the Newth Morse Pratt algorithm. For a given pattern of characters, the problem that we're solving is how many times that pattern occurs in a given target string of characters. To help us look at this problem, let me introduce Sally. Sally's really interested in dinosaurs, so we've taken a sequence of her DNA to see if she shares a pattern of base pairs found in the DNA of a T-Rex. The naive approach to solving this would be for each character in the target string, look to see if the pattern matches from that point. However, for a target string of length n and a pattern length of m, this will take order of n times m. So while this approach is simple to implement and easy to follow, it's not an efficient solution for longer patterns and longer target strings. In our solution, we'll be using the newth morse pratt algorithm, which uses a pre-computation on the pattern to save time when searching the target string. The pre-computation portion of the algorithm has linear running time of m, and the search portion of the algorithm has linear running time of n for a total linear running time of n plus m. Now let's go back to our example with Sally and go through the pre-computation for our T-Rex pattern. Here we have our pattern, which is the input above, and below is the pseudocode for finding the overlap of the pattern. The overlap of position 1 is initialized to 0, and then for the remainder of the pattern we go through this for loop. So our current character is now t, and v, which is the overlap of 1, is 0. p1, which is a, does not equal our current character, which is t, however v is 0, so we do not go into the while loop. For the if statement, our current character does not equal p1, which is a, so we go to the else statement, the overlap of position 2 is 0, and we go back to the start of the for loop. Similarly, for position 3, our current character is t, v equals 0, as the overlap of 2 is 0, and the while and if statements are under the same conditions as position 2, so we go to our else statement, the overlap of position 3 is again 0. For position 4, our current character is a, v equals 0. We do not go into our while loop, however, our if statement is satisfied, so the overlap of position 4 is set as 0 plus 1, or 1. For position 5, our current character is t, v now equals 1. We again do not go into the while loop, but our if statement is satisfied, so our overlap is extended, so the overlap of position 5 is 2. For position 6, our current character is a, v equals 2, and our while statement is satisfied, so we enter the while loop, v is set as 0, and now the while statement is not satisfied, so we exit the loop, the if statement is satisfied, the overlap of 6 is set as 1. For position 7, our current character is c, v equals 1, the while statement is satisfied, v is set as 0, we exit the while loop, the if statement is not satisfied, so the overlap of 7 is set as 0. For the final position in our pattern, position 8, our current character is a, v equals 0, we do not enter the while loop, but we do enter the if statement, and the overlap of 8 is set as 1. Now that we pre-computed the overlap of our pattern, we can search for it in our target string, which in this case is a short sequence of Sally's DNA. We initialize i, j, and k all as 1, i being the current position in our target sequence, j the position in our pattern, and k as a marker for the start of any potential matches. For the first position in our target sequence, we have a match with the first position in our pattern, so i and j are both incremented. And again, in the second position, we have another match, so i and j are again incremented. However, for our third position, we do not have a match, so we exit the while loop. In the else statement, we set k equal to i, which is 3, and j is greater than 1. So we use the overlap to find the start of the next comparison, which in this case the overlap is 0, so j is set as 1. Because j equals 1, we're comparing the first character of our pattern to the current character of our target sequence, which is c. This is not a match, so i and k are incremented by 1, and j does not change. 
Similarly, in position 4 and position 5, there is not a match, so i and k is incremented by 1 in each case. At position 6, we have a match, so i and j are incremented by 1. However, we have a mismatch at the next position, so k is set as i equals 7, j is set back to 1. At position 7, we have a mismatch, i and k are incremented by 1, and j does not change. In position 8 of our target string, we have a match, so i and j are now incremented, j is equal to 2. Again, we have a match, j is 3, match, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. At 9, j is greater than m, so we exit the while loop. The if statement is satisfied, so we output k equals 8, which represents the start of a full match of the pattern. The next if statement is satisfied, so we use the overlap of the last position matched to find a new starting point for our comparison. In this case, k equals 15, and we start matching at j equals 2. Again, we have a match t equals t, so j is incremented to 3. Again, a match, j equals 4, 5, 6, and then we have a mismatch. j is less than m, so we don't output k, but the overlap of position 5 is greater than 0, so our new k is 18, and our new j is 3. At the next position, we find a match, so j is incremented, j is now 4, again a match, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And again, we have 9, so we exit the while loop. We output k equals 18 for the starting point of a second match in our target string, and now that n minus k is less than m, we exit the while loop, and we've found all the matches in our target string. So now we know that Sally shares a little bit of DNA with a T-Rex.